So Yu-Gi-Oh! is headed towards a really big problem that I think not a lot of people realize yet. And yes, I know it's been a few days since I've uploaded again. I'm sorry. I keep getting sick. If it's not out one end, it's coming out the other. I'll let you take that how you will. Also, I just realized my shirt's on backwards. Ah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here. Destroy the ever-living boo-boo. Staying off that like and subscribe button so we can climb even higher the 1500 ladder. Still never thought I'd ever get to this point, but thank you all so much for the love and support on the channel. I really do appreciate it. Finally feel like I'm feeling better. So, we need to talk about the upcoming format post Rage of the Abyss, and, and honestly, even a little bit this format as well, but it's really going to rear its ugly head post Rage of the Abyss, especially, can't believe I'm talking about December into January now for Yu-Gi-Oh!, but when we get crossover breakers in December. So for those of you who don't know, there is a website known as Road of the King. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. You may have heard of it, but if you haven't, let me just give you a quick rundown. Essentially, they do OCG meta updates and talk about how the impact of new sets have affected the OCG and how their format is just really bad. Like, Wanted is at one, but Beatrice is legal. It's it's a whole thing, right? And so, what they are experiencing with crossover breakers currently legal in the OCG is that you essentially have to build your deck one of two ways. You build it with either hand traps or you build it with board breakers. And so now they're at a point because of the impact of crossover breakers that they're having to build their decks with uh, sort of a balancing act of both hand traps and board breakers. Now, why is this a problem? Because it's a big one. It's an issue because, especially with what we have on our ban list and our format, you're going to lose to stuff even if it's meta just because of how you build your deck. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's take, for example, something like Gimmick Puppet FTK or something that will actually be possible post Rage of the Abyss, Catapult Turtle FTK. Now, the Catapult Turtle FTK with the new Tachyon support I think is garbage, but in the context of how people will most likely be building their decks post Rage of the Abyss and especially post uh, Crossover Breakers, it just becomes good because if it doesn't get hand trapped, it can beat you. But let's take Gimmick Puppet as an example. A deck that can still FTK if it opens up the field spell or access to the field spell, like a terraforming or something, right? What if you built your deck with Board Breakers? Because a deck like Snake Eyes, it can play better through hand traps than it can through board breakers, usually. Well, you know what happens when you go against an FTK deck? You get dunked on. You lose that die roll, you pretty much just have to forfeit game one, hope that you win game two, and hope that your side deck carries you in game three. That is not ideal. That is not good. That's going to piss a lot of people, including your boy, off. Because you can't prepare for every situation under the sun between a 15 card side and let's just say for argument's sake a 40 card main deck and this was something that we saw a decent amount of near the end of last format when we still had snake eyes at tier zero but then we got gimmick puppet and essentially the format became do you play hand traps or do you play board breakers and then you have a deck like tempai that could kind of do both because you could play say 15 to 18 hand traps but then you would play like say three droplet and then maybe a double copies of lightning storm and a feather duster maybe some other stuff like maybe talents or thrust right but that deck wants to go second so it kind of has more of that flexibility not every deck can do that and so the issue that people would run into is like well damn i'm playing let's say 15 board breakers no hand traps because i feel that board breakers is going to be the better call to go with Meanwhile, I'm getting dunked on if I go up against Gimmick Puppet, and that doesn't feel good. Now, you could make the argument, well, Avery, if you go into a regional YCS, what have you, people may not necessarily be on Gimmick Puppet, and maybe you'll only see that deck if you're X2, X3, and by that point, you're out of the event anyway, so why does it matter? But you're going to have those X-Factor players that come into an event and play those decks with the 4D chess move being 
people aren't going to prepare for these things because of the fact that if they're X2, X3, they'll see these things and by that point they're out of the tournament. Meanwhile, I'm playing this, I'm 5-0, I'm undefeated and I'm dunking on people because they're not playing hand traps or they're playing a lesser number of hand traps compared to the, can't believe I'm saying this, 15 to 20 on average that we're now hitting in the modern game. Whereas maybe they're playing 10 or they're playing like, I've seen some builds recently where like, People are on like 12 or 13, like just a really odd number like that. And so they end up stealing free wins because of it. You know, you look at a deck like that I've decided to play, I guess because I'm a fucking masochist, a White Forest Runic that just lives and dies by whether or not it wins that die rolling game one and can win because it just completely gets obliterated for the most part. If it loses the die roll in game one, it's probably going to lose game one. Maybe you'll win game two. You got to get lucky in game three somehow. Maybe see your side deck cards or whatever. But it dies to shifter and droll. So it's like if people are playing those high impact hand traps, plus you throw board busters into the mix. Well, if you're on white forest runic, that woes you have set isn't going to survive. That runic fountain may not survive if you don't have a runic spell. Or even if you do, it probably won't matter like at that point you're just losing so much like it's it becomes really difficult now obviously in the sense of white force runic it's more of a rogue slash tier two deck so you're going to have those discrepancies but even when you have when you take a meta deck into consideration something like Rizal, which according to road of the king Rizal has a harder time with things like board breakers but then again you have the opposite side of that where some decks do better against hand traps and worse against board breakers, vice versa, that it's like, how do you even build your deck? And it makes me wonder if we are going to see decks kind of go back to how decks were built, I want to say like the early 2010s to mid 2010s, where you had your archetype or even good pile of cards, whatever it was, whether it was dragon rulers, hat, whatever, but you had these utility cards in your deck that were just generically good. Maybe Edison format would be a better example where, you know, every deck played like the same kind of cards, right? Like some people played Dimensional Prison, Bottomless Trap Hole, MST. You had these utility cards since hand traps weren't really a thing where you would play like an equal number of spells and traps, like one to two MST or, you know, Heavy Storm, whatever the case may be. And then you had your other blowout cards in the form of trap cards, Bottomless, Dimensional Prison, Mirror Force, whatever. It makes me wonder if we're going to see deck building go back to that, where maybe you see 12 pan traps, 13, whatever. Um, but then, like, the other, let's say, 10 to 12 cards, if that, are some type of board breakers or dual-purpose cards. I'm thinking droplets, um, anything that can be just dual-purpose used, lightning storm, you know, things like that, just so that players don't get absolutely blown out if their hand traps are useless into a matchup. But the biggest issue with this is that, again, you run into a format, like we saw at the end of last format, where you're going to lose matches just because your main deck as a whole, you're playing more bricks in it because of your matchup. You know, if you're playing, let's say, 15 board breakers, and those 15 board breakers don't do anything to insert matchup name here, whether it's Malice, whether it's something out of Rage of the Abyss, um... Let's take the Azamina cards with Snake Eyes, right? Like, obviously, they have a harder time with Board Breakers, but you get my point because it can go either way with Hand Traps or Board Breakers. You're going to get dunked on all because you tried to make a meta call that you just got unlucky and you hit a bad matchup. You know, there you can't prepare for every matchup in the game. When I went to YCS Indianapolis and my round one opponent was Dinomorphia of all table 500 garbage decks I had to play against. I play against Dinomorphia and the dude went on to scrub out. Is that because I didn't prepare enough? No, because it's just bad luck, right? Like Tempai has a horrible Dinomorphia matchup, by the way. It's actually really toxic. So we're going to eventually get into a format where you're going to lose games because you're playing board breakers instead of hand traps or vice versa. And people are going to have to start playing an equal amount and just hope it kind of works. I mean, obviously, there's going to be players who just play like 15 to 20 hand traps and are probably just going to call it a day. Maybe they side deck some board breakers. So maybe we'll see more of the side deck than the main deck if anything get changed. But it's it's going to be rough when like your hand traps just can't get you there. Unless it's, you know, blowout hand traps that just get the job done. Like Shifter and Droll, things like that. Or even the Mulch Armies. Um, which it's weird to talk about Droll because like 
if Ubel gets drolled, they can still play the ball game, which is just idiotic to me. Um, but, you know, at least you have Shifter, I guess, that blowout card. Shifter, two Mulch armies, you know, Perulia and uh, Fuaras, once again, Rage of the Abyss, have fun. Like, at that point, I think it's just overkill, but, you know, why not, right? Guys, let me know what you think about these upcoming meta changes down in the comments. I'm really hoping I can just get my invite September 28th at the Kissimmee Regional. Be sure to come up and say hi, shameless plug. But if I don't, then I'm just going to go play Snake Eyes as Amina with like 15 to 20 hand traps and hope for the best because this is what the format's going to be. Not necessarily like that right now is a bad format, but only time will tell. And uh, I just need to quit being sick so I can actually play test. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.